Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 25, that the things of God are revealed to um, the infants, and they're hidden from those who are wise and intelligent. And I remember reading that verse many times, and I thought to myself, I don't really have a problem with that. I'm, I'm not really wise and intelligent, so uh, I shouldn't have to worry about God <laughs> hiding things from me. So I used to think that quite a bit, and I started to realize that I was much closer towards the wise and intelligent side uh, than I realized, and I'd like to share an example from that. There's two questions in the Christian life that are very important to me, and I really wanted to have an answer uh, that I could say yes and very confidently. And those two questions are, number one, am I a child of God? And number two, Will the Lord fill me with His Holy Spirit? And I wanted to be able to answer both of those questions with a very definite yes. But I noticed in my life that I struggled uh, to do that. So for example, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, I remember asking God uh, to fill me with His Holy Spirit. And I would think, well, oh Lord, I'm really not thirsty enough. I, I'm asking for it, but I'm really probably not thirsty enough, so I don't think you're going to give it to me. And I would just keep on praying to God like that. And when it comes to asking if I'm a child of God, I would used to think, I would come up with this mental gymnastics and eventually kind of get to an answer, yes. But it should really be a very simple answer, just like if you were to ask me, am I the son of Mr. Pan? I'd say, yes. It didn't have to be that complicated. And I was really making things um, much more complicated than it needed to be. And I remember going to India and I was having lunch with Brother Newton and he said to me, Wenhai, you, you educated types think too much. <laughs> and I thought about that and I realized it was true. And so what I've been learning through trying to answer those two questions was that if I could fulfill the conditions for God's promise, then I can claim it boldly in faith. So for example, when it comes to asking the Lord to give me His Holy Spirit, if I ask like a child, ask the Father for bread, just with that simple need, uh, with that simple sincerity, then I can trust that God is a good Father who will give me His Holy Spirit. And when it comes to being a child of God, I can ask myself, well, have I repented? Have I asked Jesus to come into every part of my life as far as I'm aware? Then I can say confidently, yes, the Lord is my Father, and I can just believe it. So I really wanted those two questions to be answered answered firmly because I see it as a very important foundation uh, for my faith going forward. So that's one thing that I've been learning that, again, it's not to trust our feelings, but to know that if I've fulfilled the conditions for God's promises, I can claim, claim those promises in faith uh, and move forward. Thank you. A few months into marriage and, uh, you know, at this point in my life, I really find the need to uh, confess, believe in my heart and humbly confess in faith that two things that I want to hold on to my heart, um, you know, take to heart and um, two promises. Uh, one is that the Lord would fill me uh, with a deep reverence for Him always, not that I feared Him yesterday, but I would fear Him today, tomorrow, uh, and day after. And uh, it says in Jeremiah um, 32, verse 39, it says, um, uh, I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me always. And that's what I want to underline for myself, that I would have a deep reverence for Him, a heart that fears Him always. And uh, the way I take it is that the Lord would uh, make me single-hearted, that I would love Him more than I love my spouse. And um, I find the need to surrender even my spouse to the Lord, to know that uh, uh, Kamal belongs to the Lord first. And um, the Lord goes on to say that it says, um, you know, this promise is not just for you, but for your children too. And I want to claim that in faith. And he says, I'll watch over you, I'll rejoice uh, over you, and I will keep you. And, and I'm thankful for that assurance. And again, in Acts uh, 2 verse um, 38, it says, repent and be baptized uh, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And and I think to myself that uh, often I, I try to clean my heart, but um, but to also seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I pray that the Lord would do that, that He would uh, fill every uh, room in my heart with His love, with His Holy Spirit. And uh, I love what the Lord says here again in verse 39. It's, he says, uh, the promise is not just for you, but for your children and for those who are far off. And it just shows me the largeness of God's heart that um, uh, He just doesn't answer prayers that you um, voice, but uh, even hidden desires in your heart for your offspring or uh, for the lost ones in your heart that he cares and um, I just want to hold on to uh, his promises. Amen. Good morning. I am really blessed by what I heard here from the brothers and the sister. <coughs> Jonah 2.8 
the book of Jonah, chapter 2, verse 8. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. The NSB Bible reads like this, those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness. When I read of these words, always I thought that this idols is uh, referring to the the physical idols made of wood and uh, stone and metals. But when I thought and when I pondered about this and read 1 John chapter 2 verse 16, then I saw what is the idol. 1 John chapter 2 verse 16, there we read 1 John chapter 2 verse 16, for everything in the world, the cravings of sinful men, the lustful lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father but from the world. So the idols it is then the Holy Spirit convicted me of the idols in me, such as the lust of the eyes, greed, envy, hatred, selfishness, anger, praise from men, unforgiving spirit, etc., etc. So these are the idols which I have to be careful about. Of course, we have to be careful about the physical idols. Definitely, God always hates worshipping the idols. So I realized that I forfeited or I lost the grace that could be mine. Now I know why God could not use me for his kingdom because I was not under grace and sin ruled over me as per Romans 6.14. But I am confident that if I repent of my sins and forsake them, God's grace will be on me and he will use me to build the body of Christ. So this is my prayer. Lord Jesus, guard me from all these idols as we read in 1 John 5.21 Children, flee from idols or guard from idols. Thank God.